Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I think is really, really important for anyone that wants to start an online business or just grow their business in general online. When I first started out, there wasn't too much information out there on different ways that you can grow your business and ensure basically your business is set up for that success. So I really wanted to make a video so I can help you guys ensure that you're in that best position for when you are starting out. Now, it doesn't matter if you are growing an Instagram theme page for a business, whether you're starting a dropshipping store, uh, whether you're doing affiliate marketing, perhaps you're literally moving your offline business online and you're looking for that step-by-step -step guide on how to start. Basically, this video is gonna go over sort of five of the key fundamentals that I think every online business should be doing and should have. Um, and you should be keeping this in your mind at all times because these are the kind of things that help me a lot um, and I think you guys can benefit from them too. Now, as always, we will be giving away $50 to one random person in this video who leaves a comment and likes the video. So if you haven't already, head down to the comment section, let me know what business you're starting and I will be picking a winner at random at some point in the next couple of weeks. So leave a comment and who knows, you could be $50 richer. There you go, you could put $50 straight into your new business. So uh, go and do that, leave a comment and smash the like button. But let's get on with this video. Now, obviously, if you are in the online business realm and you understand how it works, you are probably fully aware that everyone talks about Facebook and Instagram marketing and pretty much running ads solely on that platform. Now, although that is great and it is a big bulk of advertising when it comes to online business, it is a huge part of my advertising strategy, but it isn't the only part that I use. And at the moment, you know, Facebook's having a lot of issues when it comes to uh, iOS updates and pixel tracking. So there's a lot of problems that are happening there. So this point is kind of talking about focusing on other avenues and other sort of methods of advertising that don't necessarily base around Facebook and Instagram. Now, obviously you have at the moment TikTok, which is absolutely blowing up and there's some seriously undervalued content creators on there that are willing to push your product for a really cheap price, if not free, just for the exposure and the free products. So I actually work with a lot of people on TikTok. Literally, I pay them and they will post a video of my product and advertise it for me on their page. Now, some of these people have millions of followers and they're literally charging a couple of hundred dollars. So really good way to get out in front of sort of Gen Z with your product. A lot of the time when people watch TikTokers and this TikTok person has posted this video of this product, uh, let's just say for example, it's gone viral and this video has got loads of views. Other TikTokers actually purchase that product and then they will remake the video trying to get that exposure and blow up their page as well. So it's kind of like this double win for everyone. Like, you know, you're paying this one TikToker to post this video that hopefully goes viral and gets you loads of sales. And then other TikTokers are taking that content and trying to go viral themselves, which in turn makes you go viral again. And you know, it's just a never ending cycle of virality and money. <laughs> but yeah, so other than TikTok, obviously you have Google Ads too. Now Google Ads is probably something I would start a little bit later when it comes to advertising. Um, but for sure, I'd be looking at influencer marketing as a whole, you know, even Instagram influencers. A lot of people don't talk about them anymore, but they are still a huge, huge part uh, when it comes to actually pushing products online and, and getting that really large reach on a sort of a discounted price. You know, a lot of pages are undervalued, they don't charge a lot, um, and you can really take advantage of that and just get a feel of your product. Where, you know, if you're running a drop shipping store or a print at demand store, that's the best way to test these products rather than spending hundreds of dollars on Facebook ads and getting nowhere. You can literally just put an ad up on a really good Instagram page or a TikTok page that you know is right for your demographic of customer and you can just try and see if it works. So this kind of leads me on to point number two and I think this is growing a social media page based around your brand. So everyone is online these days, they're always scrolling through their phone, they're looking for products online and they're seeing ads come up on their phone when they're scrolling on Instagram and Facebook. Um, a lot of the time you are gonna find that people will click through to your brand when they see your ads or when you're spoken about online and they search you up. That's sort of like the first point of call. It's, they'll even go to your social media before they go to your website. So it's really, really important that your social media reflects your brand properly and it looks like a good quality product. So, you know, I've had it before where I've set up companies like dropshipping stores and I've been running them for months, but I never built up that base level of social media. So I was never posting regularly. I was never posting high quality content and pretty much I just let it fall to the wayside. And I really, really think that I could have continued much further with these brands that I'd set up 
if I had a proper social media following there and I had a good strategy in place to drive my customers to my social media pages so I could keep them interested in my product. You know, you look at all these huge, huge brands like Louis Vuitton or Supreme or Palace or Adidas, Nike, you know, they have a really good social media following and a really solid content strategy. Now, obviously, I know that's completely out of the realms of what we're doing, uh, you know, maybe you will be the next Nike, but it's a good place to follow. If these guys are doing it, we should be doing the same. It's really, really important to ensure that we do have a solid social media strategy there, just so we're ready when we are starting to scale and grow that brand. Number three, this is going to be testing multiple products and multiple businesses. Now, this doesn't really apply to you if you already have a business and you are just moving it online, but especially for you guys out there that are starting dropshipping stores, you're starting Instagram influencer pages, uh, you know, you're looking at affiliate marketing, uh, print on demand and all of this good stuff really need to be testing and trying different things constantly. So I can't stress this enough. When I first started, you know, it took me a while before I got traction on drop shipping and found that proper winning product. So just because one product doesn't work doesn't mean that the next one won't. So you need to keep going and figuring out what works for your brand. So, so yeah, it kind of goes to my other points, you know, trialing out different advertising methods, trying out different content on your social media, um, and all in all, trying out different products. You know, that product might not work. Who knows, after 30 minutes of research on Facebook, you might be able to find a new winning product that is actually gonna smash it and make you thousands in sales. So I would really recommend constantly rejigging and trialing different things um, until you find the right thing that works. Now this may take you a hundred times or you could literally get lucky and land on a winner or your third try. It's just a numbers game. But I know when I first started, when I was really focused on a brand and I really believed in this one product and I wanted to sell it, I would sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks hammering ads, spending money, losing money on influencers because it just wasn't converting. But the main thing I should have done was just scrap that product straight from the beginning. You know, I wasted a lot of time and effort and money on this product that just wasn't converting and wasn't selling, it wasn't very popular. So I would have been much better off just taking that energy and putting it into a different product that potentially showed a little bit more potential and who knows where it would have been there. It's just a matter of trialing different things uh, and eventually you'll land on something that works. Okay, so point four. Now this point isn't really spoken about too much when it comes to online business and it kind of blows my mind. I remember when I first started, I didn't think that this was even gonna be important. I didn't think I was gonna to have to worry about it. I didn't think it was something that actually made money. But this point is the power of emails and the power of collecting emails and using them in your marketing strategy. I almost build every product launch that I do uh, from emails that I've generated from like a pre-launch. Um, I always collect emails on the website in exchange for a discount code. And I will always save sort of emails from previous checkouts so that I can provide upsells and news updates to my customers. Now, not only is this gonna drive you more sales, but it's also gonna give you that on tap brand exposure when you need it. You know, if you launch a new product and you wanna test something out for free, send it out to your email list and see how they react. You know, they're your customers. They've already proven to purchase from you or shown some level of interest online about your brand. So it's a great way to test new things and to make more money. Now, obviously collecting emails can be quite a task within itself. I remember back in the days, I used to like create Facebook groups and constantly just invite people to my groups and try to add them that way. But it turns out that isn't actually the most efficient and best way of doing that. So what I now do is set up sort of an email campaign where I run a competition. So I use a company at the moment called Gleam.io and they allow you to host sort of online email competitions where people go to that page, they'll leave their email, they will follow you on Instagram, like your Facebook page, all of these different things for multiple entries into a competition. Now this competition could be anything, but it's usually based around the brand that I'm launching. Essentially, if they leave their email, they get entered into a chance of winning. I do this with every new company that I make, it just gives me a couple of thousand of emails to use as soon as I launch, right? So I already have that head start there and I kind of get an idea and a good feel in terms of whether it's gonna be a good product because I can see how people are reacting to the competition. If there's no one entering, that obviously means that the product's crap and no one wants to win it. So. Yeah, I always use emails now and I understand the power of emails because honestly, I have some businesses where I'll send out, you know, 60,000 emails and that would generate me 2,000, 3,000 revenue. Um, and on digital products, you know, that's 100% profit. So that is literally the easiest way to make money 
once you have a successful business and you have it running for a long time, keep hold of them emails. They are valuable. They are worth more than gold and uh, they're gonna make you a lot of money. So um, yeah, for sure, if you haven't got that in your strategy, you are doing something wrong entirely. But don't get me wrong, I was not on top of things when it comes to email marketing, and it's only sort of in the last year and a half that I really have been focusing on it. There's loads of different platforms you can use, such as Klaviyo and MailChimp to run your email campaigns, and you can always set them up on automatic flows. So if someone buys from you, they can be added to an email flow where they get sent out upsells over the course of the next week, um, and you know, if they purchase things, you can be put into another flow and sent new emails, all of this good stuff, more videos to come on that in the future. But yes, emails are very, very important. Okay, so my fifth and final point is probably gonna be an obvious one, but it is the most important thing and potentially the hardest thing to get right. So you need to be persistent with this. This, this whole online business stuff is not easy. No matter what the gurus say, there's not some miracle formula that's just gonna make you rich overnight and be some e-commerce guru. I've had successes in e-commerce. I make money doing this and selling products online, but I am by no means an expert and some crazy level professional. It kind of boils down to luck and skill a little bit. You know, you have to be persistent and you just have to constantly trial different things. Obviously, if you give up after the first hurdle, you're gonna get nowhere. And a lot of people that are getting into sort of online business literally do just see this as a way of making really easy, quick money. And it's really not, it takes a long time. You know, I've been doing this for five years now. It's only really now starting to pay off because now I'm landing on bigger brands and I'm able to scale a lot further now with my businesses because of all of the things that I've learned over the past five years. So for me, that is by far the most important thing. Don't get me wrong, I know it's so difficult to stay motivated when you aren't making money or when everything's not going right, it's so difficult to stay motivated. But literally, you just have to ask yourself the question, like, why do you want this online business? Why do you want to make this money? And just use that as your driving force. That is the best piece of advice I can give you. You know, mine, for example, was I wanted to have enough money so I could help my family. Not have to worry, you know, money stress is the worst thing. So I, I had that driving force there and I knew that I wasn't gonna stop at anything and I wanted to achieve that. Um, yeah, basically that that's what I did and that's why I'm here. So you guys need to find your driving force. You need to understand why you want to do this and what you want to get out of it. And then you need to keep on going and don't stop. <laughs> and as cringy as it sounds, you know, just keep working at it and it will pay off. Not everyone watching this video is going to make millions selling stuff online. That's it, that's end of, that's just how it is, that's reality. But some of you will for sure. And you guys will be working your ass off for the next couple of years but that's okay with you because you know that's what it's about and you're happy to do that. But yeah, I hope this video has helped you in some way. Obviously, we've touched over a few topics there and to me, they are some of the most important things that have helped me grow my businesses online and I hope they can help you too. They're pretty easy to implement. They're more so just points that you need to keep in the back of your mind when you're working online. You should use these points that I've made today as sort of like a base structure for your online businesses um, because they're really gonna help you and you know, they've helped me. So uh, hopefully they can help you in some sort of way. If they did, please feel free to leave a like on this video and let me know in the comments if you struggle with anything when it comes to online business, if there's something you wanna learn about, uh, if there's something you want me to talk about or, you know, hit me up on Instagram and shoot me a message and I'll be happy to chat with you and help answer any questions there. But there you go, guys, that is today's video. I wish you all the best of luck with your online businesses and your entrepreneurial journeys. But yes, I will see you in the next video. Catch you later.